Welcome to a Gently Kit. I'm Alexis. And I'm Tiffany, and we're the hosts of Legit Kid Lit, a video series where we get to see into the secret and silly lives of authors and illustrators. We love to celebrate and promote books, but most of all, we want to say hey to all you readers out there trying to find that right book for you. We hope that you can find some new reads after today. Welcome, Paula. We are so excited to have you here on Legit Kid Lit Episode 6. Um, we want to get to know you first, so can you please describe yourself in five words? Hi, Alexis and Tiffany. Wow, five words. Let's see. Um, I am witty, sarcastic. I am a bit rest anal restrictive. I'm, I'm a little, that's, that's, that's two words. Okay. Play the game right, Paula. Witty, sarcastic, high strung, um, fun, and caring. We want to know what is something you would never leave home without. That's a really easy question. The thing I never leave home without is my Pentel pen. And literally, my daughter is listening to this interview and she started to laugh because I said, oh, my pen, because I remember that I had it and I have to, the pen has to make an appearance. It will also serve as my microphone if you all ask me to sing. I don't allow people to touch my pen either. Not just for sanitation purposes, just because I don't want you to touch my pen. Haha, <laughs> I love it. Your stories are always told in two perspectives. So readers would like to hear you have a conversation between both of your characters in your newest book, Turning Point. I feel like a typical, conver a typical conversation between Mo and Sheeta would go something like this. Okay, so. Mo would say, what should we do today? You know what? Let's hit center court. Sheeta. Okay, cool. No, you know what? Let me call me Mila and the girls and see if they want to meet us at the basketball court. Sheeta. Okay, cool. No, you know what? We're going to go to the mall. We're going to head to the mall. All right, I'm fine with that. You're always fine with everything. You know what? We're going to the basketball court. Well, I'm good with that if you want to go to the basketball court. See, the problem with Mo and Sheeta is that Mo is bossy and doesn't mind being bossy. And Sheeta wants to always please. So it's not the most exciting conversation in the world, but it's so peak them. Like, it's definitely one of those relationships where they are comfortable being in the roles that they are. And the only, re that, the only reason that Mo would even be indecisive at all is because she hasn't figured out what she wants to do that day. But trust, it's the type of conversation where once she decides, that's what they're doing. Even if she did want to do something different, that's what they're going to be doing. Your book, Turning Point, centers around ballet. We would love for you to show us some of your ballet moves. Okay. This is, um, keep in mind that I'm a ballet enthusiast and not a ballet dancer. And my youngest daughter is going to see this and be like, oh God, like your hands are wrong and your feet are wrong. But here are my best ballet moves. That was beautiful. What song or artist would Sheeta be listening to right now? Sheeta would be listening to, because she'd be around her friends, one of those little somebody, little Yachty, little whoever's, she'd be listening to hip hop. But what she actually loves, even, even though she doesn't um, maybe understand the pull, she loves contemporary gospel. So I think while she might be listening to a hip hop artist, whoever the hottest artist is of the day, I think she'd actually be attracted to something like an Ernest Pugh because that's something that her aunt would listen to all the time. And um, you know how it is. When you listen to something enough, it sort of seeps into you, and next thing you know, you love it. Sing it. 
And don't forget your microphone. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the problem with Ernest Pugh is his music is really slow, so it requires a very melodic voice, which I do not have, but here we go. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. That's all I'm going to give you, seriously. Like, no. <laughs> Somebody would say it so much better than me. Do you have a favorite song that you love to belt out? The song that can turn me into a karaoke master is I Care by Beyonce. I actually, like one day with too much time on my hand, which doesn't happen very often, I wrote, I translated some of the song into French because I'm a Francophile as well. I love French culture. So here we go. <clears throat> and my microphone is back. Well, I care, I know you don't care too much, but I still care, baby. Well, I care, I know you don't care too much, but I still care. Thank you. Queen, what book would Mo be reading right now? Mo would totally be reading Grown by Tiffany Jackson. Um, I had an opportunity to read an early copy and it's totally a book that she would relate to because it, it is about um, circumstances that are very close to me and that's kind of the how black girls are expected to be more mature than their white peers. And I think Mo would really be able to relate to that, especially with um, the situation that she finds herself in at the uh, ballet intensive. Also, um, what or which character in your So Done series do you find yourself, maybe it's the easiest to write or you identify the most with? Um, I'm really curious about which character you have um, really connected with. The really interesting thing about my writing and how my characters come about is that there's a little piece of me in all of them. So I really honestly relate to a piece of all of them. And so done, Mila is very much that quiet, like I'm not quiet now, but when I was younger, I was I was a Mila. I was a little afraid of my own shadow and, you know, very much um, willing to go along with, um, with people to get along. You know, I didn't want to rock the boat. So I do relate to her. Um, but Tay is also probably a little bit of the adult me in that she's, you know, very much not going to have you bully her or um, she just, she, she's just very independent. And so uh, there's a little bit of both of me, there's a little bit of me in both of them, but if I had to pick one, I would say it's, it's Mila for sure. Do you have a hidden talent that you'd like to share with readers? I have a really weird hidden talent that I don't, I can't actually share it. Like, you know, most of the time somebody can show you how they do their talent. I can't. My hidden talent is I have superhuman hearing, but wait, not like, like I can barely hear the television unless it's on screen. I can hear low lying noises. It's really weird. When we are in the house, we could be in the very, the far back of the house and we can be sitting there, we can have the television on and I can hear when someone pulls into our driveway because I somehow can hear the low hum of their vehicle. I don't hear the slamming door. I don't hear it. I just can hear that they pulled up into the driveway. It's really eerie. And so like we'll all be sitting there and I'll randomly say to like one of my kids or my husband, go get the door. Someone's here <laughs> and they'll go and there'll be somebody there. So that, that's my hidden talent. That's a really handy talent though. I love it. I feel like all of your characters kind of grow up really fast. Um, so what message do you want to bring to your readers about that kind of theme that you cover? 
What I want readers to take from any of my stories, I want them to be able to find a little bit of themselves in the story because I do think that my stories are universal. And I do think that the things that the characters go through are things that a lot of young readers go through, just maybe not under the same circumstances. I want people to walk away with empathy for the situations that the characters are in. I I want young readers specifically to know that they're seen. Um, the things that I put the characters through, the way that they develop from them are because I want young readers to know that we as adults understand that their life isn't always peaches and cream. We we tend to think because they're kids that that's the case, that they have no issues. And yet, you know, here they are dealing with the world around them. So for the young readers, I want them to know that we, we do understand that that's not always the case. But for my adult readers, for those of you, the teachers and educators that I love to death, I want you all to be able to see the, your students and recognize the Mo, the Sheeta, the Simp, the Raleigh, the Mila, the Tay in those students because they are out there. And, you know, sometimes students come into the classroom with a lot of baggage and we all we all carry baggage, but they come into their, to the classroom with a lot of baggage. And sometimes maybe my characters can help you understand how heavy that baggage is and just make it a little bit easier for them. Um, and also easier to interact with them. So I just, I'm trying to build empathy in my stories every single time. Do you have any writing quirks? I really do need help to immerse myself into the world. Um, I do have a day job. And so I don't have the luxury of writing six, eight hours a day or even four hours a day straight. So I always need help to kind of surround myself and get my head in the game. And so I either need music um, and the music has to be like kind of match what I'm writing. So if I'm writing, um, it has to be like maybe hip hop or R&B, but mostly what I find helps is um, ocean noises, uh, not ocean, water. I love either rain noises or um, my favorite for the last two books have, have been mountain stream noises. And so I put my, my Bose headphones on and, and it just, all I can hear is this water just streaming. It's so peaceful and it really just helps me to disappear completely. I love it. I, I definitely need that to write. Do you have a secret you could share with our viewers? This is hot off the presses. No one knows, we haven't even announced it yet but I just was signed for a three book series with um, Wednesday Books. And we are hoping that this will be, it's, it's actually young adults, so I'm veering a little older this time, not by much, but we're hoping that it'll be Gossip Girl level series. Like we really want to finally put something out there in the world with, um, a more inclusive uh, cast. So don't tell anybody yet. Congratulations, that is so exciting. I can't wait. But yeah, we won't tell anybody. Except for your lovely viewers, of course. <laughs> and we all know how to keep a secret. All right, so we heard a puppy earlier um, and saw a glimpse. We would like to see your pet or your grand pet. And any tricks or special things that he can do. Here he is. Look at him. I called him over and he came over immediately. Look, no tricks. He just loves to cuddle. He only loves to cuddle. That's all we know how to do, doesn't he? Look, hello. Say hello. Say hello to the people. Say hello to the people. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. Of course, but he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, now he's, he's keeping, he's watching guard over the yard. Mm-hmm. This is this is my baby though. I am I am a very very typical um, grand dog mom or whatever the word is grand mom dog uh, <laughs> the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> That's one of those moments. But no, I spoil him to death. We all love him. <laughs>
This has been so much fun. To all our wonderful readers, we hope you enjoyed our show and are inspired now to pick up some new and exciting books. And we'll be back next week with a new special guest and some crazy new fun. I'm Alexis. And I'm Tiffany, and we're signing out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Just go by it!